Challenge exhibition. Uh, but while we're setting up for that, let me remind you, for all you tuning in or who tuned in during that run, we are Summer Games Done Quick 2016. We are raising money for Doctors Without Borders. We passed the $750,000 mark during that run, which makes us three quarters of the way to a million dollars donated. We still have, oh, 21, 23 hours to go. So hopefully we can hit that by then. But let's read some donations. Um, First, we're going to go to a quick Twitch ad as we are sponsored by Twitch. Dude, I always thought you guys were in the end. All right, welcome back. Thanks for that awesome Twitch ad. We are again sponsored by Twitch here at Summer Games Done Quick. We've got a whole bunch of donations that I didn't get a chance to read because that was such an awesome run. First, we have a $200 anonymous donation. Hey, listen, I have nothing useful to say. Thank you, Nabby. $50 donation from Volkner. Ocarina of Time was a highlight of my childhood. It makes me super happy to see you guys playing it in order to help those who need it. A $100 donation from Triage. Just got off a 15-hour shift at a hospital. So excited to see a Zelda speedrun that actually features the game. I look forward to these marathons every year. Thanks. $20 donation from Rain Time. This Ocarina of Time run is hitting me right in the nostalgia, so I just had to donate. Thanks so much for making my Friday night. We're so glad to do so. The Truth donates $20 to say, awesome runs this SGDQ so far. Have never seen a glitchless OOT run and I'm loving it. Also enjoyed seeing the love Kotar finally got at this event. Keep up the great work and save the sprites. Save the animals. $50 donation from Karma Z. Third time watching a GDQ event. Wasn't really into speed running before finding out about these. You guys are absolutely incredible. Keep it up and keep crushing those games. Going on a 15 hour workday, the GDQ has gotten me through the long day quite nicely. Ocarina of Time is an N64 childhood favorite slash classic. I put this money towards the cowl level in Diablo 2. Quite possibly my favorite game of all time. Incredible job by all the runners, announcers, and staff. All right, what's up guys? My name is Pit Icarus. I speed run Ocarina of Time. And uh, today, I'm going to be giving you guys a little taste of Ocarina of Time glitches. Some of you guys might be wondering what this game's all about. You only got to see a glitchless run, but it was pretty cool gameplay. You might have seen this Poe in the glitchless run. Her name is Meg, and there's four of her. And uh, we're going to be playing with Meg a little bit, starting off here. So I'm going to attempt to do a uh, Din's Fire actor glitch here. All right, I missed it. So we got to go for it again. That's this a bad start. This trick is frame perfect. And yeah. The frames that work look different sometimes depending on when he quick spins. So you can take a few tries, but Pity's really good at it. All right, nice. we got yeah. it. Good job. This All right, was so, meant to be played. so we saw Meg before, but well, she kind of multiplied. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we kind of have eight Megs now. 
And uh, on N64, it, it lags quite a bit. And uh, I guess we'll do it again, because why not? <laughs> the consistency. Fine. All right. Good job, good job. So, well, <laughs> we're going to be seeing a lot of Meg this time. God, Four, baby. eight, twelve. So now we have twelve megs on the screen, and uh, we're gonna be lagging a bunch. Where is Waldo? We're playing the PAL version right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's not actually one real meg and eleven fake megs. It's actually three real megs and nine fake megs because the real one multiplies. And we have uh, <laughs> three pots here, too, for each pot. All right, so moving on, we're going to be going to another room of Forest Temple now. And I'm going to be doing a ledge clip here, so I'm going to target on the same frame I dropped from this block. It's uh, also a one-frame trick. Tough one. Buffer it. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you don't do that. There we oh, go. there you go. <laughs> All right. So we're doing the last Din's Fire Actor glitch now. All right. Nice. Okay, so you can kind of hear Meg crying in the background if you listen really closely, but... We're super done with her at this point. Like, we've seen way too much of her. So now we're gonna be doing something way cooler. All right, and this glitch is known as Rocket Chest. And uh, oh, yeah. we, we yep. yeah, we kind of just, <clears throat> well, we go up <laughs> really high. And uh, we go to what we believe to be the game's max height. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. On N64, it actually crashes if you go to the top, so I'm just going to kind of get off here a little bit early. And we're falling really far right now, and I wasn't even on it for half the time you can be on it. <laughs> All right, enough of this. We're... I'm gonna use Far as Wind and we're warping to Water Temple now. And now I'm gonna try to die on the same frame that I long shot this target here. So I have to do it eight frames after the timer hits one. But the cool thing is every time I hit pause, it'll uh, move the timer one frame, even if I'm not actually moving one frame of the game. So all I have to do is buffer down to two, uh, buffer down from two to one, and then count eight pauses. So eight to go. You guys didn't get to see all this in Glitchless. Look at all this pausing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. All trick. right. So now we go really high up. And uh, because we clipped through the top there, we just kind of keep going until we revive. And uh, we did this because I don't really know where to go in Water Temple, so I, I, I kind of wanted to have a, a good top-down view here. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you guys thought that Water Temple was annoying nice land. casually, it's not really a big deal here. And now we can kind of see where we want to go. <laughs> And I guess I, I kind of want to go down to those torches, but there's like a bunch of walls here, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it. Probably just mess around with a bomb here or something. Oh, All right, nice. and I did a good shot called a oh, Weird Shot. It's you, Pity. And <laughs> you can shoot through the ground if you do a Weird Shot, so I just did that down here. All right, now my buddy... Bob the Tech Tight coming over here. Hi, Bob. <laughs> All right, so I went up. Oh, 
Don't kill it. Don't kill it. Don't hurt Bob. Bob, come back. What did Bob ever do to you? My boy. All right. All right. So I went up in Water Temple to explore, and now it's his turn. Bye, Bob. So. <laughs> he kind of clicked through the top, too, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he's not coming back. I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> he's in a better he, place. He, he's kind of gone now. <laughs> it's we set him, him free. All right. So next I'm going to be doing a glitch called Action Swap, and it's going to allow me to get a bottle on my B button. So I kind of know where I want to go in Water Temple, but I don't have any of the small keys. But if you look at this item in my inventory, it says Bomb Bag Holds 20. And that's because I opened the chest in Dodongo's Cavern after I already RBA'd a Bomb Bag. Uh, so when I pull it out, the text says, it looks like this item doesn't work here. And I kind of beg to differ, because if I drop my fish here with the item on my C right button, <laughs> it gives me 20 Water Temple small keys. And then if I catch it, it'll give me 25. So I can just oh, yeah. repeat this process, use the keys, drop my fish, catch my fish, and I'll have unlimited Water Temple small keys. So next, I want to save warp here. And uh, I saved warp with bottle on B button, and I'm going to spawn in water. So it's going to give me a blank B button, which will be useful later. And what's uh, actually interesting is if I pause here, I won't have the Master Sword in my inventory. So I'm actually going to save warp one more time to get that back. And I'll still have a blank B button. And uh, you can read a donation now or something while I set up this next trick. Certainly. Mentosman8 donates $100, says, great OOT run. I'm glad I managed to catch some after work. Here's to the one million dream and the dream of killing all the animals. Another one's fine? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, no problem. Cool. $50 donation from John Swift. Totally forgot to donate during the run, but here it is. Great to actually see the game for once. Save the animals. <laughs> All right, so next I'm going to be going out to Hyrule Field. And I'm going to be doing a really cool glitch, but I don't want to really give anything away just yet. All, all you need to know is it's really cool, and you're really going to like it. <laughs> Best description. <laughs> we're kind of we're gonna be piling really on cool. a couple glitches here, and it's gonna be looking really cool. So, first off, I need to call Epona, who you did not see in the glitches run, and we really like her because she's really cool. All right. So, I uh, don't have anything on my B button. So, when I climb Epona here, I can use other items while I'm on Epona. So, if I hit my Ocarina button, I'll just kind of dive off a pony here. And then if I walk around, I'm controlling a pony here, and this is known as remote control of a pony. <laughs> and uh, next I'm gonna kind of stack some glitches on top of this here. All right, next I'm gonna be doing a glitch known as swimming on land. And well, we're swimming on <laughs> land. Oh, this is the easiest way to explain it. So now we're doing swimming on land, remote control Epona. But it doesn't really end there. It gets much better. Nice. <laughs> so I kind of call this riding around town. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you look at uh, Link's hand here, he's kind of having a good time. <laughs> Lude, come on, Penny, Lude. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not take damage? <laughs> no, you can't. Ride right around town in his six foot, right? You can pull the hammer, too. <laughs> and then if I pull the bow here, okay. and uh, I can pull the hammer here, and he's kind of stuck, I can pull a bomb. And then when I pull another bomb, he doesn't even, like, move his hands again. It just kind of appears in his <laughs> hands. All right, so this coach was pretty cool, but uh, we're kind of done with it at this point. So... Gonna hit Ocarina again. But during all this time, we kind of lost track of Epona. Where is she at? <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have to return to her. Oh, hi there. <laughs> so, we're gonna get the full use of Epona here and ride to our next location. And now I'm gonna dive off of Epona one more time. 
and just kind of walk away. You get to see her run away too. <laughs> All right. So next I'm doing a hyperextended super slide here just to save a little bit of time. Nice. And uh, it just makes you go really fast. <laughs> Where's this grotto? It's around here. All right, there we are. Okay, this next trick is, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty precise. I, it's like probably three one frame inputs. It's at least two, probably three. All right. I need my sword. That's why I double save warped. Oh, my camera panned on me. We're just gonna have to re-enter here. Not a big deal. All right. All right. That should work. <laughs> so now I get damage at the same time this kid grabs me. And well, <laughs> we can kind of move around while he's on us now. So first I gotta kill his friend. And now we're, we're gonna Hess again. <laughs> and well, he can't really keep up with us. So he's just gonna kind of be floating around here. Yeah. All right. He's just trying to hang out. <laughs> yeah, he's having a good time. All right. So next up is a, a very classic glitch. But first, yeah, it's really easy to clip into stuff in this game. All right. Can you hear the Nair's love sounds in the background while I play this game? <laughs> All right, so he doesn't give me a quiver, and that's because I RBA to quiver 20, and the game checks to see if you have quiver 30 or quiver 40 to decide what he wants to give you. And well, we can kind of just like pick him up, <laughs> and I'll just, I'll just leave him right here. <laughs> they kind of didn't give him a lower body either. We can push him around a little bit too. All right. <laughs> So next, uh, I'm going to be setting up a glitch called Bottle Adventure. And basically, all it does is it puts items that are not a sword on your B button. And uh, earlier, I set up this file by save warping with a bottle on my B button. And they gave me a stick on my B button. And because I have zero sticks, I can just swipe over the stick and get a bottle on my B button again right away. Do I have time skip? <laughs> <laughs> Unbuffered. All right. So, Bottle Adventure starts by going back in time with a, a bottle on your B button as adult. And then it'll check whatever item is on your C right button as Young Link. And the item on my C right button is Big Poe. So, it'll be checking how much slingshot ammo I have in my bullet bag. And I have 44 bullets. And that'll give me a certain item, very appropriate for the donation incentive. <laughs> so, very nice. yeah, I kind of sold out for this donation incentive. <laughs> and actually, if I use this, it's, it's the Master Sword. Selling out is Master Petty Sword. Petty wins partner. <laughs> <laughs> After this exhibition. <laughs> Yeah, follow me, guys. Nice SBA setup. Thank you. All right, so next we're going to be playing with a rock here. Literally playing with DF. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this rock over here is kind of dumb, and it serves no real purpose as a speedrunner. It doesn't really do anything except get in our way. 
So we can kind of just like clip through this thing if we want to. <laughs> and uh, because it's so useless, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it for a glitch here. I'm just gonna kind of throw it really far. <laughs> All right, so Nair's Love is a super useless item in speedruns. I can't even tell you how useless it is. But in the glitch exhibition, it's like my best friend. So that's cool. All right, so I'm going to be doing a Nair's Love super slide. Classic. And now I'm just going to kind of throw the rock from over here. <laughs> And you can see it dangling in the air here. It's just, you know, doing its own thing. <laughs> and, well, it doesn't exactly go in the same spot either. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> What's up? All right. Dipped it in the lava. It's just chilling. You need your dipping sauce. If you actually, um, if you leave that area and come back in, the rock will be, be uh, it'll be in the intended location, so. You only get to enjoy it for a, a short period of time there. Oh, I selected the wrong file. Major mistake. I need to reset. Major time loss. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been worse on VC, though. Oh. <laughs> I agree. All right, so I'm going to be doing the bottle adventure glitch again, except I'm going to be putting a different item on my B button. So I'm going to start off again by putting a bottle on my B button. Nice. Oh, I'm buffered again. This guy's a beast. Tass. Hey, look Someone at that. Lock this guy up. He's criminal. All right. So instead of putting the big Poe on my C right button as child, I'm going to be putting a bottled fish there. And then that's going to point to how many Deku nuts I have in my inventory. And I have 13 Deku Nuts in my inventory, so it's going to be giving me a different item this time. And uh, 13 value when uh, doing Bottle Adventure puts the Faro's Wind on your B button. And it's actually really useful because Faro's Wind is normally restricted to only inside dungeons and not inside boss rooms. But it's, it's really good outside of outside of those locations, and I'll give you a couple examples of why. So Wendy, Wendy talks about things that point to each other and that it puts it in certain places. It's basically just values that he's manipulating in his inventory, because everything in this game has a, has a value to it, and there's really jank ways to manipulate it. <laughs> yeah, this game's pretty complex, honestly. You should check out Zelda speedruns if you have any <coughs> questions or message myself or any other OT runner on Discord or Twitter. So, um, Oh, yes, I so, love this. <laughs> so the game gives you a fixed <laughs> camera angle here. And so the background is just kind of set. So when you're walking around here, the background doesn't change, but you're getting closer and farther from the redeads. <laughs> so I dubbed this sliding redeads. I always called this the treadmill. <laughs> the treadmill. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. All right. So we're going to backtrack a little bit here. And I'm going to be setting Farrow's Wind and Temple of Time here. And we'll come back for this later. All right. You can do another donation if you want while I'm setting up. Sure thing. We have a lot to go through here. We have a $50 donation from Gui's book. I've been glued to the stream all week. Looking forward to seeing that million dollar mark broken again. Can't wait for that too. Marsha donated $50 and said, going to be dead on my feet at work tomorrow, but totally worth it. I can't count the number of times Ocarina Run has made me a what at my TV. First time watching and loving it all. Well done, everyone. Spamming the map makes you go faster. It really does. <laughs> yeah. So... We want to go somewhere else than Kakariko, but we're going to make a quick pit stop. A oh, pit stop? Yeah. A, pit, a pit stop. I got you there, yeah. Pity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys get it? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> okay. 
Got to equip my handy dandy Nehru's Love because it's my glitch exhibition item. And if you start climbing the ladder there before your hover boots end, the, the ring just stays under your feet. Discover that as a child. I was meant to do this in life. I think that's allowed in glitches too. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> yeah, they almost had a lot. All right. Oh, wait. Got to gotta set up my handy dandy Nair's love before I do this. Just make it extra easy. All right. Make it extra, extra easy for me. So, um, I'm a rock now. <laughs> you rock, you, pity. Oh, you me too. Yeah, I got you, Greg. See, you can't beat me. <laughs> too quick. So, yeah, we're gonna, we're going where we want to go now, but I just wanted to be a rock. I don't know how you do this so stone-faced, pity. <laughs> oh, dude, see, now we're going. And don't get us going. <laughs> Shout out to right DF now. for a second don't time. Don't get me going, I swear. All right. So we're going to do another Nair's Love Hest because why not? <laughs> He's the best. You just stand there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really do anything. All right. Now we're in the final dungeon of the run. The... The third dungeon, the this, final dungeon. This is the true ending. This is PB pace, right, Pity? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Best answer. Probably not. All right, so next I'm going to be doing a one frame trick where you talk to Navi at the same time you hit the switch here. And that's just so I can get through this door without pushing down the block. Close. This is also one frame. That's what a one frame trick is. Yeah, oh, one frame. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There we go. Nice. All right. Still faster than when Danny B pushed the block. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the hammer can't break this floor. And it's actually really dumb because it can break all the other walls in Dodongo's cavern. And now um, we're fighting the big boy here. Hardest boss in the game. He really is a hard boss, trust me. Because he's the final boss in the game. Intended. All right, so I can swag up the fight a little bit. Hopefully, I don't screw it up. Just bounce the bombs off the wall. Yeah, you. Uh, All right, we got it. Okay. Whoa. Okay, we got oh, it. I think I just yeah. yeah. boss. Thank you. Thank you. And now, well, the King Dodongo fight wasn't really interesting at all, honestly. But that wasn't really the reason why we came here. The reason is uh, actually much cooler. So when we actually first kill King Dodongo, the warp doesn't load right away, so I can kind of just run straight into it and sit here. And, uh, well, I'm going to be warping back to Temple of Time now instead of watching this cutscene because we do that in other categories. And, uh, well, I kind of beat the game. <laughs> so now we're in the credits. And, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. Ocarina of Time, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I want to give uh, special shout-outs to Skater. Originally, we were going to do this ex exhibition as a two-person project, but he couldn't make it, so I, I flew solo on this one. Uh, I'd like to give special shout-outs to GDQ for allowing me to do this run, to everyone who donated, uh, all my friends on the couch, all other OOT runners out there. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Pitacris. Uh, I speedrun Ocarina of Time, currently working on 100%. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, pity. Good job, pity. Yeah, pity. I give a shout out to those glasses, man. Yeah, they're, they're majestic, good. and I like it. He's a new Quinn Stevens. <laughs> Two, 2 .0. Quinn Stevens. Two point oh. Two point oh. Two point oh. you want to say anything? Also, uh, another extra thing about wrong warping into the credits here. 
Well, you kind of break the timeline, honestly. <laughs> Fourth timeline. Not, not that not that we don't break the timeline and in, in speedruns already, but we kind of break it really bad here. And uh, it's a little creepy. We kind of yeah. We kind of. <laughs> <laughs> this takes on a whole new spin. Yeah, kind of finishing the game as a, as an adult. 